Hi everybody, it's Doc Horowitz here to introduce you to our next module, which I call Building a Culturally Proficient Organization. Up until now, we've investigated various approaches and theories about how managers ought to interact with employees, particularly in the area of communications. However, in our previous module, we began to switch over to some very specific aspects of that communication, and they have to do with culture, that this issue of culture is becoming and has been uh, very, very important as our world has become more diverse and more globally interconnected, uh, not just geographically and in business, but generational differences as well. It's not uncommon to find baby boomers working alongside millennials. And as you just discovered in, in your last assessment, uh, the four communication styles that everybody has, one of which at least. And many of you wrote very wonderful discussion board uh, responses ex explaining some of your challenges in working with people who have different communication styles and personality styles and you, you were very kind because I'm sure some of you had many strong emotions that uh, came about as you thought through some of your relationships uh, based on some of these differences. So this um, uh, desire to investigate and become, if you will, more culturally proficient really is the answer to the question, what do I do about all this difference? And what do I do about all this conflict, perhaps? And what do I do about all my own feelings of how I feel about these different cultures uh, and ethnicities and race, for example? Uh, in this module, you'll have a chance to really kind of self-evaluate your deeper feelings about issues about difference. The key lesson for all of us to remember here is we're talking about the workplace. We're not talking about necessarily how to make friends, who you ought to uh, 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 involve yourselves with on a social level. We're not talking about celebrating difference, celebrating uh, various groups. That's entirely within your own domain and that ought to be. However, in the workplace we're talking about very different matter. As you know, one of the key concepts upon which our course is predicated is that all that we do as a colleague and particularly as a leader is done to maximize the productivity of each individual and their teams in order to ultimately achieve organizational goals. I'd like you to really think about your last reflections and many of you were frustrated as the differences became uh, uncovered and I have a recipe for you and it's something that I call culturally proficient conversations. And again, in talking about culturally proficiency, let's make sure we understand at least Doc Horowitz's definition, if you will, of what that really means. And what that is, is that we accept that people are different. They're different in many, many, many ways. They belong to multiple cultures of race, ethnicity, personality, um, uh, uh, generational differences, physical differences religious differences, and on and on and on. And uh, we'll examine also, I believe, in this module, how we got the values we got, why we believe each one of us in what we believe. Where did that come from? And we'll have an interesting activity called How You Got to Be You, in which you'll be able to explore on a little more deeper level where those values you currently hold come from. The reason we want to do that is because you carry those values into the workplace each day as you interact with people who may be very, very different from you in so many ways, including their own values. So this is tough stuff. This is not an easy road. But the easiest thing is to just be ourselves, 
try to work with people who we like and are just like ourselves, and yet we don't have that luxury uh, in today's globally diverse workplace. So I want you to pay particular attention, though, to some examples I've given you, some of them a little bit humorous, because as you've probably figured out by now, Doc Horowitz is, fits most comfortably into the expressive mode. So I like to do things a little creative, and sometimes I bring some humor to that. But there's always a serious point to be made. The conversations you'll be reading about and thinking about um, involve these culturally proficient conversations. And essentially, they're really, they pick up where you left off in your frustration. And that is this ability, takes a bit of courage, may not happen overnight, but when you, in, when you encounter others, your supervisor or subordinates, if you're the leader, and you're having difficulty communicating because of whatever the difference might be, that you actually find the moments to engage in dialogue, yes, and the more, quote, brutally honest it can be, the better that will be. Now, that will not happen very easily. It is not an easy topic. Nobody wants to hear how someone doesn't approve of how they behave, how they work, how they interact, and so forth. So that's pretty obvious. So this is not for the faint of heart, but I'm asking you to um, develop the courage to approach someone who you are comfortable enough with or work with and actually engage in one of these conversations in which you explore these differences with the ultimate aim of accommodating reasonably some of these differences you discover about one another. You don't have to adopt them. You don't have to become them. They don't have to become you, and it's not possible. And therefore, the next best thing you can do is understand these differences, understand the expectations others have, just as you do, and candidly discuss with them the behaviors that they and you have that may help you to be more productive and those that distract you or inhibit you from maximizing your performance. So with that rather lengthy introduction, I welcome you, invite you to our next module, How to Build Culturally Proficient Organizations.